Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this exclusive interview with Partha Neo, the CEO and co-founder of Vantage Circle. As organizations the world over have shifted to the remote work model on account of the COVID-19 pandemic, one thing that has acquired even greater importance is employee engagement. So how do organizations keep such a physically distributed workforce engaged when you can only rely on collaboration tools at the moment? What are the tools and technologies they can leverage to make sure their employees are equally engaged while working from home as they were when they were working from office? What does the future landscape of employee engagement look like? To deep dive into this, we have with us Partha Neo, the CEO and co-founder of Vantage Circle, the leading employee engagement platform. Launched in 2011, Vantage Circle is a single platform for engaging employees through rewards and recognition, wellness, perks, sentiment analysis, analysis and more. Prior to Vantage Circle, he has worked in companies like InfoEdge, Hughes, Bharat Electronics across different geographies and functions and has more than 22 years of experience. He is an MBA from the Indian School of Business and BTEC from NIT Kurukshetra. A very warm welcome to you, Partha. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's great. It's great to have It's a very uh, different situation today, but yeah, very happy to be here. Exactly. I'm looking forward to a great conversation going forward. We would also like to tell our audience here that Vantage Circle is also our Powered by Partner for Tech HR India 2020, where we'll be delving into adaptable tech for a reset in our world of work in detail. So let's begin our conversation today, Partha. We've been speaking about how the world of work has changed. So let me start with why do you think employee engagement is of paramount importance in today's world then? See, I see it was always important. Okay, that hasn't changed. But what it has made us realize in this current situation is that uh, if you don't have engaged employees who will go beyond their job descriptions, beyond their normal call of duty, you would not have been able to manage the situation in the last four months. Okay, it is because you had engaged employees; they could manage it. They could go beyond the job description. There's no way that you have, you could have planned for this kind of a thing. Now, so so I would say it was always important. But what has changed today is first is of course the realization, and the second is that uh, using technology to engage earlier. I mean, it, it was there, but now you're looking for technologies, looking for tools in how you can engage with your employees. So, so that's how I, I, I think it, it's going to change uh, uh, in the current situation. Exactly. I think it's so true when you say that it's become all the more important because people are working from various corners of the world, different locations, remotely. So if they're not engaged, they will not give in their 100% and more. So, so agree with you on that note. So, uh, what are some of the elements of employee engagement in today's crisis-ridden world and in the future, Partha? See, we, I mean, from our experience of working with various companies and even seeing our own company engagement, what we think is, I say, engagement is a horizontal. It's not like you use these two things for employee engagement. Everything which you use, every technology, every policy should lead to engagement. Okay. It should not be that it causes disengagement, but there but to answer your question, there are some specific tools focused around uh, engagement, okay, or, or primarily focused around engagement. I would list it out like three of them. One is wellness. I mean, it is so important today, so important. And the number of inquiries that have come to us in the last four months is amazing. Okay, it's good for us, but bad that people are looking for these kind of solutions right now. Uh, it, it's no longer a tick mark activity, wellness, okay. Uh, now, the wellness tools, the online or app-based tools are something which people are focusing on. The HR is looking for this kind of solution. The second is the recognition tools. Now, see, recognition has been always going on across the world. Okay, I mean, every company, you had your you know, annual functions, you had your town halls, or sometimes your boss would just walk across and say, hey, Partha, good job done on this you know, last project or something. That's not possible now. Okay. And I'm not saying for the, just for the next six months or this six months, even in the future, I think we will be changing the way we work. Many people will be working remotely. So how do you use, or what are the tools in the recognition space which you can use to uh, you know, give this kind of recognition which were done in the physical world earlier? And the most important thing I think is the measurement. Earlier, you could measure the sentiment of the employees, you know, like a dipstick, you know, you as a manager, you just walk across, you, you will, uh, you know, you'll be able to figure out how the mood is. Now it's not going to be there. So you have to make sure that you just don't do those 
end of the year surveys, you have to continuously monitor the pulse of the company. So I think these three recognition tools, wellness tools, and the measurement tools are going to become much more important. Again, just to say, these are not new to tools or new, not new areas. It's just that it has come to prominence now. It will become more and more important now. Absolutely agree. I think, yes, they were always there, but now the relevance and the criticality of having them on top of your priority list for organizations has become all the more, you know, important in these days. So, yes, the thanks for sharing Absolutely. those points. Yeah, totally agree with you. So, uh, uh, Partha, if you have to talk about the trends here. So, what are some trends that data around employee engagement in India is highlighting? If, because you've been studying, you know, looking at the market very closely now. Yeah, so this is a very interesting question and I, I keep on answering it in different ways to different people, okay? So I'll say overall, engagement in India is considered to be higher compared to international or, or the US numbers. Primarily US has a lot of rich data around it, uh, but India has higher engagement. But what I say is, how will the decision change if I say it's 5% engagement uh, compared to a 70% engagement? It is still something, it's a journey, which you'll still have to take. Okay. You are at some place, you can still improve whatever your engagement levels. Okay. What, what I've seen in the, in the data is, so the engagement numbers are there, okay, but there's a very broad number. I would, whatever that is, everyone needs to get going on this engagement and try to focus in this area. But what we have changed is the, is the need for digital tools. So some of the trends which we have seen in the last two, three months, as I mentioned, wellness. Of course, many people are looking for wellness kind of solutions or, or a tech-based online uh, wellness solution. The second is the demand for when we see our demand. Okay, It has increased twice since February, uh, the demand. So the number of demos which we do, a uh, number of inbound leads which we get, that's, that's twice. What has happened is that this was all considered nice to have. Now it is necessary to have tools. Okay? So that's what we see in the trend uh, among people whom we talk to. Nice to have tools. We will look into it some other time, you know, whenever we get free, which you'll never get free, by the way. And then now it's like, okay, we want to take this. Okay, how do we customize it for our requirements? Uh, what are the options which, is, which are there? So that's, that's what we're seeing in the, in the trends uh, overall. Yeah, exactly. The, as they say, future is now. So whatever you plan for the future is happening already. And uh, even digital Absolutely. transformation journeys, they got accelerated like this, you know, the, just because of the, what happened in the world across. So yes, very great points there. So what they were thinking of doing now, they're made to do. So it's no longer nice to have. Yeah. It, it's good for us, like service providers like us, it's good for <laughs> us. I mean, somewhere where we have been trying to convince people that it's good to have, good to have, but, you know, uh, it, it was always not a priority. Nothing was, you know, no one was getting killed because of not having yeah, the solution. Yeah, so there was no it, urgency. That, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Great points there. Thanks, thanks, Partha. So tell us about some tools and technologies that can be leveraged to shape employee engagement in these times. So I think it's related to the first or second question which I, I talked about. Okay, one is that in every tool, whatever you are using, you have to look at uh, how to bring in engagement. Many of the B2B tools which are there actually leads to disengagement. People don't want to use those tools because it's so cumbersome. 10 years back, it was different. 10 years back, people didn't have, or, or maybe 10 to 15 years back, they didn't have a consumer class experience. They're used to like a tool which is clunky, uh, you know, somehow get your job done kind of thing. Now people are used to experiences, you know, you use Instagram, you use Facebook, you use your e-commerce sites like an Amazon Flipkart, you're used to a different kind of experience. So that is something which every tool should be geared towards that. Okay. And that's where the HR has to make the decisions in, in, in deciding which tools to use. Okay. And of course, some some of the things has to are basics in place. Okay, you have to have your communication, your leadership, your policies definitely in tool. And then these three kind of tools, I would say. I think the first tool which definitely one should use is a measurement tool. Okay. Not just us. I mean, there are like lots of players out there in the market who are providing the sentiment analysis. You have to figure out where you are in engagement before you can take steps to improve. What are the areas where you can improve? You can't get it done at the year end survey. You have to do it in a continuous measurement. So that's the measurement tools which is there. Big ones like a Glint, Culture Ramp, and all those guys. I mean, you've, you've seen the kind of uh, valuation and everything which they have because it's becoming more and more important. 
the second I talked about the, the recognition tools, you know, uh, all the recognition tools which are out there, okay, sometimes it was just a tick mark activity. Now you have to look at what will actually be aligning with your company values, what will be of strategic importance to you. So those kind of are important. And the wellness tools. Wellness tools is not just a, like a physical activity uh, kind of thing. It's more of a well-being and, and a comprehensive tool where you can plan your year of wellness activities, you can plan activities, you can measure activities, uh, and then make changes according to it. So I think these three tools are specifically which uh, you know can be leveraged in you know, measurement, recognition, and wellness tools. Uh, that's what I see. Great. So that ties into the next question that I have for you. So what, what do you say are some of the common traps to avoid when selecting requisite tools and technologies for employee engagement, especially in the organizations? Right. See, uh, first one, I think it's consumer class. Okay? I mean, we are, I mean, when we are using tools, I am like so fed up with some of these tools and I don't know how are these billion dollar companies where my experience, because earlier, if you see the buyer and the user is always different in a B2B company. Okay. So buyer might be the, the CXO level, the CFO, but the user might be the HR person or the end employee. So there's a disconnect there. And they didn't used to care. I mean, I, my buy, buyer buys in a different criteria, whoever is maybe cheaper, whoever is more secure, and the user uses it in a different way. Now you have to make sure that every tool has consumer class. It should lead to engage. Secondly, mobile. I mean, I, I, I think I, I, I'm not revealing something uh, you know, very secret. It's, it's mobile. Okay. Third is customizable. No tool will ever meet your requirements as per your requirements. So you have to make a cost benefit analysis and see that you want a customized uh, stuff which takes care of your policies and uh, one two more things one is the service area so use tools get the tools pay for it amazing tools but they don't get any, they don't get at all what's required maybe you need to bring in the expert services which are there which will help you in getting this adoption among the employees so that's another area which you should look at the consumer class mobile customizable uh, sir, and the last area is something they should give to the HR. They should be answering more fundamental questions uh, like, is this tool helping me align to my values? Is this tool uh, giving me information which I can correlate with my performance? More fundamental questions for HR. This is not, I mean, it's there, but HR is not using it right now. I think it is something which HR will look more and more, the analytic tools, uh, as we go ahead. So, so, yeah, I think very common sensical stuff, I would say, you know, uh, uh, which is there. Yeah, but very common sensical, I agree, but people still do not pay attention to it. So I think there's some great points there. I think, yes, customizable, knowing your consumer base. I think these are very important because sometimes organizations just thrust some tools and technologies onto their people without even knowing whether they really want to use it or not. So I think that's a great point. Yeah, and every HR knows it. And I think HR needs to be engaged first. Exactly. Okay, then they will do it beyond the, the normal stuff. And so yeah. there's a knowing and doing gap. Everyone knows whatever, whatever I'm talking today with you, everyone knows about it. Okay. But there's a knowing and doing gap. Exactly. And I think now is the time to make sure that this gap is uh, removed. Exactly. I so agree with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Partha, for sharing that. And finally, so what are you looking most forward to in, for, in People Matters Tech HR India 2020? So I have been to Tech HR for a couple of uh, events, and I, I'm sure I'm going to miss out on the, the fun activities, the physical activities there. Uh, but I, I still think uh, fun part is going to be very interesting. The, the, the Indus, I think, uh, whom Indian. we have, uh, Indian Ocean, sorry, Indian Ocean, and, and a couple of uh, stand up and things which you have. And that's, that's something which I'm looking for. I should maybe put it. You know, politically, I should put it as the last point, but I think it's the first point for me. <laughs> uh, second uh, uh, thing is, is, of course, the, the great speaker list which you have. And I think being a virtual one, it has helped to get some great speakers, which sometimes would have been very difficult to get in a, in a physical setting. And of course, connecting with other HR leaders, other service providers also in this space and learning from them. So yeah, look forward to this. Great, great. Thank you. So thank you so much for your insights, Partha. It was a pleasure talking to you. And I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts in detail at the Tech HR India 2020 that's happening next week. So uh, thank right. you once again. Look forward to meeting you there virtually and having lots of fun, lots of in-depth discussions as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me and look forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thanks, Fata. Bye-bye.